Bend those knees, buddy. There you go. <laughs> Hey everyone, welcome back to Holtzfelder Woodworking. My name is Alan. What do you do with all your baseballs? My son has a number of souvenir balls he's collected over the last few years. He attended his first minor league baseball game, the Vancouver Canadians, at Nat Bailey Stadium this summer, and he got a foul ball. And then at his second game, another foul ball. And then there's a couple of home run balls his dad hit. And he's sure to have a few milestones coming up as well. So he's going to need somewhere to keep all of these, a shelf, a cabinet, something cool but simple. So I'm going to go dig up some scrap plywood and see what we can make. This is the general work cup I'm thinking about. Two rows of four balls or so. I have a bunch of three quarter inch plywood, but I'd rather use up the little bit of half inch I have left. For the back, I'll use quarter inch plywood, but I'm going to set it forward so I can get a half inch French cleat in behind to mount this on the wall. Next up is to cut all the pieces to width and then cut to length using a stop block for repeatability. Two sides, three cross pieces. We need a slot for the backing to fit in. Using a piece of half inch that will be the French cleat, we can see where the quarter inch will fit. Raise the blade to about halfway up the plywood and then set the fence for the full thickness. Cut the slot in all four pieces and then bump the fence back until you have a slot wide enough for the quarter inch to fit in snugly. Then repeat the process on the rest of the pieces. Our middle piece will need to be cut through completely. There's a few ways we can put this together, but I could use some practice with my biscuit joiner. So I mark out the pieces for alignment and cut the slots. Once those are cut, I like to do a dry fit to make sure all is well. Then I cut the slots for the center shelf. Another dry fit and then test for size. So far, so good. Now we need to make the back. Measure out the sides and add for the slot depth on either side. We can subtract a mill or two to ensure a proper fit and that will all be hidden. Sanding the inside will be impossible after the glue up, so do it now. The glue up process is a very complex procedure consisting of gluing and also clamping. While that's drying, I rip a piece of half inch at a 45 to use for the French cleat. Correct me if I'm wrong, Sparky, but the safest way to do this is using a sacrificial push block. One piece for the wall, one for the back of our project, and it will slide easily and securely right into place when we're done. Now, the major flaw in this method is the four slot holes on the top and bottom. Not really a huge deal since we're not really going to see them, but I'm going to fill them anyway with some quarter inch plywood pieces I cut off. The grain won't match, but it still looks kind of cool. Give the whole thing a good sanding and then glue the French cleat into place. For a project this size, glue by itself will be plenty strong enough. We need to cover the front plywood edge with something cool. And I happen to have a little bit of oak kicking around from the mudroom bench project. Once again, note the sacrificial push block. Mark the two style pieces and cut to size. Glue and clamps are strong enough here as well. Oftentimes I'll use brad nails to hold it in place, but even though this takes a little longer on glue up, you won't have to fill any holes later. Make sure to get rid of all the glue squeeze out using a damp rag. We're not painting this project, so we don't want to see any glue stains. With the styles in place, cut each rail to fit and glue them in. Clean up any minor overhang with a flush cut bit. I use a couple of coats of the Oslo Hartvox for the finish. And install was very easy thanks to the French cleat method. 
which I try to use in every project that I can. Uh, turns out using the biscuit joiner was a little bit overkill. Next time I would use a couple of rabbits and a dado, especially considering I used the uh, face frame to cover that up. In fact, I'm gonna use that on my very next project, which I'm about to go start right now. Thanks for watching Holtzfeller Woodworking, everybody. Stay tuned.